Okay, this is my sprinkler wiring 101 video. Uh, basically just the, the basics for sprinkler wiring. Um, I've already got this wire cut as though it was for in the home, or not in the home, or wherever this is mounted, whether it be inside the home, garage, or outside of your house, or whatever. Um, I've got this one cut as though that, that um, has already been basically spliced back and ready to go to be able to be wiring for in there. Um, this would be as though it ran out of the house, um, into the ground, was buried, or wherever it needed to go, all the way over to where the sprinkler box was, came out of the ground, and that's what the sprinkler valves here are here for. So, what you do when you start start doing the uh, the clock itself is obviously feed the wire into the clock where it needs to go, and you want to wire the common wire up first. Make sure that it's set very well so that it's tightened down and that there's no no way that wire is going to be loose or cut or come out because if this fails the common wire runs the entire system whether you have have one zone or a hundred zones it's it's going if this common wire fails it's going the whole system is going to go down so um, i'm going to use red for number one green for number two um, the actual color code doesn't matter it's what whatever you choose um, However, uh, you want to stick to something that you will remember or take a photo of it or whatever it may be because um, the, the colors just represent the number that you that you are using when um, or in the system um, so the, so that you know when you get to the other end of the line that this wire is this wire right here. this wire is this wire and this wire is this wire. that's that's the reason they're color coded. So, um, when you do this, also make sure that you can see just a little tiny bit of uh, metal right there. You want to make sure that you don't allow too much to be to be sticking out because you don't want these to be able to arc. If you have this sheath cut way back, it gets shoved in there and it's sticking out too far. If the wires cross, it will arc and that would be bad because you'll wind up shorting it out or running multiple zones at a time when you don't want them to. Um, you can fry your clock or cause cause other problems to, to happen in the system. So it's just it's not worth it. You want to make sure that your your leads um, don't are not any longer than they need to be. Um, these two wires are not going to be used because currently I only this is only going to be a two zone system. Um, if I was to expand this into say for example the th these will just be as though my, they were the front yard. Um, we'll just assume there wasn't a, a backyard. If there was then we could use those to be able to run to the backyard if we needed to. So that's the reason I folded those out of the way. So the way that you wire up the uh, um, the valves, we'll just assume these are in the ground, which they're not. Obviously, they're sitting on my bench, but we'll just put these in so they just so you can see that the solenoids themselves. Sorry, face them both the same direction as though they're coming out of the box, so you can see them. Um, they're two different brands. Doesn't matter what brand they are, as long as they are um, all the the same voltage, which all irrigation valves are the same voltage, so it doesn't matter. Um, I guess I shouldn't say all. It depends on if yet there are some DC ones, so so that would be a different case. Um, so what you want to do is grab one from each. The color does not matter. If it's colored, it's not going to be a problem. So what you wind up doing is you grab one from each, take it. Uh, twist them both together now if it's too long you can cut it shorter and then you grab this end and that will be your common so the common like I say in the field is gonna run everything that gives the power to everything now I am using non grease caps because I'm on my workbench and I don't want to be covered but you need to make sure or covered in grease you want to make sure that you use weatherproof um, grease caps or grease filled um, uh, grease packs or something to keep all the water from ins uh, coming inside here because what happens is if it gets inside here it will corrosion will travel back down these wires and can destroy the system you'll have to re rewire it it's not a good good scenario so right here I'll go back and see number one right here is red so I'm gonna take number one and we'll call this one right here number one the gray one will be number one I'm wiring it up like this so that's why the red wire is there is to distinguish as red equals one green equals two so there i am i grab the other wire that goes to this other other one and as you can see right there it's too long so i'm going to trim that a little bit shorter the strands i have separated so i'm going to twist them together so that they don't come apart 
Okay, you can wrap it around, but you don't have to. And then see how I just wrapped it around there. It, that is, it does typically give a little bit more bite to it, but it's not necessarily um, something that has to be done. And then I usually tighten it up until it tightens enough that it starts twisting the wire. So when you do that, you know that when you, if you were to take this apart, all of this is wrapped very tightly together. That's the reason I do that. So in this case, You've got your, your, your common wire runs to both valves, your red runs to number, number one, and your green runs to number two.